and gentlemen, welcome to game two of this series between Jimpo and Def Angel. Def Angel here, the green Zerg player, and Jimpo, our red player from Sweden here at Scrap Station. This is part of the Alienware Challenge, casted here by me, Sebastian Koberg from GG Vision, and boy, this is an epic game. How do I know that? Well, I watched it live at DreamHack Summer 2011, where it was played at the uh, Alienware uh, area. And uh, this is as epic as they come on Scrap Station, I dare say. And uh, even though I know how it ends, I am uh, flabbergasted to uh, watch it again and to cast it for you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this was an epic series and of course the first prize in this uh, tournament, uh, which took place uh, underneath alongside the grand tournament at DreamHack, is an Alienware Aurora, one of those glowing desktops that make you a very uh, proud as a nerd. I'd sure like to have one. And uh, we have not only Jimpo and Death Angel in this tournament, but uh, remaining also Sase and Hasuops. The, the winner of this series will face Sase, and then the winner of that series will face Hasuops in the final. And here we do see Barracks going down. Seems like he will be doing a bit of an unorthodox wall in here. It's difficult to wall in on Scrap Station, uh, I personally must say. But then again, I'm not a pro. Jimbo certainly is. He's been practicing very hard at StarCraft 2 from even before it was uh, uh, released. Uh, he's been uh, very, very focused, uh, so I hear, on uh, winning this uh, game or becoming a winner at this game, rather. Here we see a quick expansion going down for Death Angel, being quite ballsy. Uh, meanwhile, quick gas uh, for Jimbo here in the second game as well. And uh, uh, last game he did a very successful timing push at Metalopolis, I do recommend you check that out. And uh, that uh, turned out to be pr quite effective, but Scrap Station is a very, very different map. Uh, I know when I had TLO on as a co-caster when we did the Mondragon series, we saw a very epic game here between Mondragon and Bratok, and uh, TLO expressed how much he hates Scrap Station. Well, I must say I love Scrap Station, both to play on, but uh, mostly to watch pro gamers play on, because it always uh, renders so interesting games, and uh, just a m bunch of epic stuff happening on this map but of course it is tough to play on and uh, some say it's heavily imbalanced and uh, we do see spawning pool of course going down for death angel and the gas as well we could uh, be fairly safe from seeing uh, uh, a macro intensive build from both players factory now going down to complete this wall in together with two supply depots this is a very wide ramp uh, in more recent maps in stock of two uh, the ramps are usually a lot less wide so that it's easier to wall in and secure some early defense and uh, Roach Warren following immediately after that spawning pool as soon as the uh, scouting SUV has uh, left the place but he's still around and might be able to uh, glance it and uh, of course uh, uh, that would uh, probably uh, usher a response from Jimpo in terms of uh, marauders or a fortified uh, siege tank defense we'll just have to see and uh, meanwhile we do see a uh, tech lab going up here for the barracks uh, so uh, scratch that about early marauders and again a hellion opening very very oh uh, almost a carbon copy of last game's build quick command center tech lab on the barracks and hellions out of the factory uh, of course hellions very very uh, adapt at this map uh, they and a layer going down here to expansion again uh, the players are following suit in what we saw last game uh, very similar builds uh, here the layer going down at the expansion to give it some extra health points so that it can last longer should uh, it be attacked uh, no upgrades yet but uh, roaches on the way and uh, looking at the income tab for just a moment, uh, we see that uh, uh, Death Angel has taken a quick uh, harvester lead, 27 to 22, and that shows in his mineral intake. However, a uh, second queen coming up and more drones, so uh, very heavy on the macro, and uh, that is not a bad decision. We see how Jimpo has fortified himself with bunkers and everything, and the scouting roach going out, and uh, this queen should be able to take care of this hellion. It's more for scouting purposes than anything else. Uh, but he might be able to get a kill, yes indeed he does, uh, might be able to get two. Uh, but he would be more wise to use it for scouting than actually uh, killing workers, because uh, information is key, but it will be denied by this queen. Scratch that! Beautiful uh, micro here from my uh, Swedish countryman Jimpo. Uh, but that should be the end of the Hellion. But no, uh, he continues to evade death. That is uh, very nice of him, though only a matter of time. 
And uh, now we see Siege Tech again going up here for Jimpo, very similar to last game's build. And uh, morphing here his command center, uh, his second orbital command rather. And uh, now lifting it off and we'll see, he can't do the same mid-game push I say, because uh, it's just a, a much longer trek. Uh, to get around here to uh, Death Angel's base and the whole map architecture would uh, not really allow him to do so only now going for uh, Surging speed upgrade, but also two quick gases here at the expansion so and uh, a beautiful little uh, FU here from uh, Death Angel uh, forcing uh, Jimpo to delay his expansion by a very very valuable amount of seconds uh, start of this uh, it's a, a game of details and the tiniest amounts and here seconds are delaying uh, Jimpo from securing his expansion putting uh, Death Angel into even more of an economic lead 50 harvesters to the 30 of Jimpo now this is almost too good uh, if Jimpo were to mount an attack very soon uh, Death Angel will not have enough units to answer it but uh, uh, well, it seems like he might be able to get away with it. Spire now almost done, so we can expect some utilist harassment coming out of uh, Death Angel very soon. Very powerful on this map, uh, the short air traveling distance uh, and the general architecture of the map lends uh, air map control. Uh, well, that is a very powerful thing to have for any player. Now, double tech labs going up on these new factories and five mutilists as well as a bailing nest and evolution chamber in production for the Romanian third player Death Angel who's been very prolific in the sort of minor online tournaments here in Europe and he's uh, working hard to get into the A-list scene of uh, the very top Goose players. Now we see what kind of damage he can do with these Mutalisks. They are all over the place and I dare say that Jimpo is less than prepared. Uh, no turrets and uh, no marines in, in place. Uh, uh, SCVs going down and uh, he has to pull them now pulling back marines but this has still been a fairly costly uh, endeavor here for uh, Jimpo losing uh, quite a lot of mining time and even a few workers uh, five workers killed in total for death angel by death angel rather now uh, killing even more here at the expansion uh, very beautiful he managed to get away with that very economic opening now uh, able to uh, transition into uh, mid-game aggression because of it. Uh, Baneling speed now being researched and Stimpak on the way for Jimpo and uh, laying siege to even more mules and uh, marines but uh, soon that should be deflected. Turrets going up and marines now being all over the place and Death Angel losing several mutalisks needlessly. Less than amazing. And uh, meanwhile we uh, see the upgrade machine starting to get underway here for Jimpo. Quite many siege tanks and uh, here the mutalisks, uh, the two remaining are uh, well just hanging out interestingly and uh, meanwhile we see here uh, an expansion already up and uh, on a good way to becoming saturated here at the goal. Death Angel he sure got balls and I do like that. He's one, he's down 102 uh, Jimpo and uh, many banelings morphing 30 of them to be exact and uh, uh, miss melee attacks uh, one is soon to be completed so this is a very very powerful um, push that will soon ensue and uh, he probably wants to not attack head-on but rather attack Jimpo when he is uh, uh, in movement when he is um, uh, repositioning his troops and uh, if he succeeds at that he should have game two in the bag and he needs to make something like that happen take the gold take risks because uh, this is uh, a fairly high profile tournament indeed I mean Sasa and Hasuobs wait on the other side of the corner and uh, you do want that Alienware Aurora to enhance your gaming as well as nerd glory and uh, now flyer attacks and more mutalisks on the way and uh, starport up here for our uh, Terran player Jimpo and double factory so uh, Thor's should be out uh, he is probably not aware of the immense bailing threat on the map no he has absolutely no clue but he might have star sense and uh, that goes a long way in this game another evolution chamber going down and we do see quite beautiful creep spread here for Death Angel could be better but it's not bad and he should probably reposition these because uh, surprise is an advantage he should not give away easily. Uh, these Banings could definitely win him the game in one fell swoop, but uh, could all, he needs to have surprise at his side. Now in another expansion going down for Death Angel, Jimpo needs to make something happen soon, and he might do that as soon as his uh, 
uh, infantry weapons level 1 upgrade finishes because otherwise Death Angel will just be unstoppable. The economic advantage will be uh, too great. Uh, yet to see any force in the production line here but um, uh, they ought to be arriving very soon. Now the upgrade machine is in full works in the station pit as well going down for Death Angel. He is becoming mighty indeed. Here we see a medevac dropship. Uh, that might be able to inflict the kind of damage that uh, Jimpo needs to uh, get back in this game. Not that he's uh, losing it, but he's on the verge of losing it. Uh, Death Angel definitely building a very strong advantage. And here before the battle ensues, let's see, 61 harvesters to the 49. And here we see a very successfully deflected drop uh, from uh, Jimpo here. Death Angel being able to kill it with minimal losses and uh, that's yet another nail in the coffin for Jimpo. He uh, he can definitely still come back in this game but uh, look at the, all the green stuff on the minimap ladies and gentlemen. This is a very strong Zerg player indeed uh, with uh, quite a bunch of mutilists that could cause a lot of havoc uh, wherever this infantry army is not. And uh, pathogen gland upgrade as well as uh, overlord uh, upgrades going up and hive on the way as well here at the expansion of uh, death angel uh, we might be seeing uh, brood lords or even ultralisks if it comes to that and uh, still Jimpo true to form uh, simply sits on his ass waiting for the right time to strike personally I think that time was quite a few minutes ago but uh, Jimpo knows better than I and uh, looking here at his uh, unit count we see 11 fearsome tanks now one Thor, two medivacs and 43 marines and these marines have one upgrade in the bag already on their weapons and another one on the way vehicle weapons just now finishing and that's probably the queue that uh, Jimpo was waiting for. It's all about the banelings now, ladies and gentlemen. Where will they strike and will they strike effectively? He is trying a flanking maneuver, that is obvious. Uh, and uh, that could definitely win him the game right now. Jimpo needs to move out. He ought to have been moving out earlier, but uh, uh, we just have to see if he can make it happen here. The pincer attack is on the way. Banelings and Zerglings crashing from both directions. Banelings going into the tanks rather than the Marines, but uh, they're getting all roasted anyway. Utilisks uh, dying needlessly to Thors and looking at what's left we do see a Terran army rather than a Zerg. Uh, four tanks, one Thor and a whole bunch of marines but a lot less than just before. But it's not about what's left standing now, it's about how much Death Angel can reproduce. Beautiful fungal growth on these tanks and infested Terrans though they shouldn't do much. But those fungal growths uh, truly weakened the already weak tanks and uh, sure uh, Jimpo might be able to lay siege on this Zerg expansion, but the Zerg should be able to reproduce in instant. And now we see 26 Banelings and 16 Zerglings on the way along with the crack upgrade. One Queen dying uh, needlessly. And uh, Death Angel should be able to take down this force if he can uh, position himself correctly. A Mule being dropped to repair that Thor. Very nice move, Jimpo. And uh, Jimpo surely knows what he's doing with these. Uh, Biomech pushes, man. He did it last game at a much earlier phase on Metalopolis, but never mind. Here comes the counterattack. Serglings flashing in, dying, and here Banelings and Fungal Growth. This should be able to take down this attack immediately. Uh, you see how many Banelings that Thor just soaks up, but never mind. Uh, Jimpo lost that battle, but he's already got a new army in place. Will he be able to take down this expansion? Uh, I dare say he will. Uh, lots of SUVs coming with for repair purposes. And uh, he's also effectively dropping down here. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I will show you that in a picture-in-picture -picture window. And uh, effectively, Jimpo has uh, carefully selected the right moment to strike and is now quickly diminishing the Zerg forces. I'd like to see another command center building somewhere to secure any of these uh, uh, outlying expansions. But Jimpo, he, he really knows what he's doing. Once again, uh, the Zerg had all the advantage he needed, all the positioning, all the economy. And here's going for another beautiful pinch attack. Both players are doing very well, but Jimpo is doing better. Zerglings all up in the business of these siege tanks and Banelings crashing in. But Banelings are not the most effective counter to siege tanks. Uh, I dare say that a, a Roach army would have been uh, a much better... 
uh, thing to have right now in order to counter this uh, heavy mech play. I think that Death Angel is not responding in the best way possible. And uh, again, beautiful here by uh, our uh, Terran player Jimpo, who does not know about this expansion, but he star senses it and uh, will be able to take down this building hatchery no problem. Very beautiful. Jimpo clearly shows that he is the smarter player, the cooler player, the one with. Uh, uh, the greater strategic mind, but here again, the Banelings crashing into the siege tanks and marines, but they are beautifully spread, and you see how cost ineffective these exchanges are for Death Angel. He's got a superior economy, at least he used to. Uh, now Jimp is actually uh, leading, despite having lesser harvesters, uh, but. Uh, uh, Jimpo, he strikes in a much more efficient way, a much more deadly way, and he strikes where it hurts the most. And here we now see Greater Spire up, but uh, uh, we have no Broodlords yet. Uh, we do see a bunch of Corruptors building, but uh, what good is that when uh, your beautiful economy that you once had is now in shatters? And uh, here we do see a uh, fresh command center that uh, will be somewhat delayed by this overload once it moves out. So it's still anyone's game, but Jimpo has clawed himself back into it very convincingly. He's now in a very strong lead, I dare say. 130 supply to 104, 106. And uh, going now for a beautiful double dropship here. Double uh, dropship drop. And uh, I, I love just the way that Jimpo plays Terran. He uses mech and he uses cold calculation to the utmost advantage. Broodlords now being constructed by Death Angel. And uh, it's, uh, it's simply a beautiful thing to see. He is not just a run-of-the-mill Terran who simply uh, copies every Korean build. But never mind that, these marines simply didn't do the trick. Managing to save two out of... Uh, uh, the deadly circling trap that was uh, Death Angel's response. Uh, nice try by Jimpo, but uh, no dice there. But still, it's the kind of stuff he needs to do to just force Death Angel to reposition. It is now Jimpo's game to lose, and I dare say that um, uh, he's. Well, he has to uh, do a lot of mistakes to lose at this point. But still, Death Angel's got a fearsome army, and once again, he will throw it, it seems like on the siege tanks and marines of uh, Jimpo. But again, this beautiful spread of the tanks, uh, but they were not in siege mode. Needlessly, uh, these tanks are going down in huge numbers. This is what Death Angel needs to come back. Uh, sure, Jimpo is still standing after this exchange, but he should have had twice the amount of tanks left had they been sieged. So, uh, nice uh, usage there of... Um, uh, this moment in time when uh, Death Angel could strike. Very beautiful indeed, so these players are exchanging blows, but uh, uh, Death Angel is the one who needs to come back at this game. He's lost all the expansions he had, whereas uh, Jimpo is establishing new ones, or will, as soon as he remembers this one. Uh, this is up and running already, and uh, this uh, force here in the middle isn't going anywhere. The rocks are still up, so no air counterattack uh, coming up anytime soon and uh, he hasn't been harassed since uh, very early in the game. Uh, it's uh, now all about uh, not effing up, uh, as I say, to keep this PG-13. Uh, yet another drop here, many things to uh, look out for uh, in this game. And as I said, uh, it uh, was glorious to watch this live at DreamHack, I must admit. And uh, now going uh, uh, Overlord, rather Corruptor hunting and a GG coming out of Death Angel somewhat prematurely, but I guess he had grown tired of throwing banelings at siege tanks, something you shouldn't do. So uh, he's down 2-0 to Jimpo in this best of five series. Let's see if he can claw himself back and take it down in order to face Sase next, in order to get that beautiful alien, uh, alienware Aurora at the end. See you in game three, GG.